Just north of the West Chelsea Historic District is Hudson Yards, which we've talked about before. In this area, especially near the Hudson River Park, there are a few projects in the works that could connect with the park itself. These include the second phase of the Hudson Yards development, the recently started Hudson River Rail Tunnel project, and the planned northern extension of the High Line. As for this section of Hudson River Park, if you walk along the waterfront from south to north, after passing the terminal warehouse, you'll notice that starting around 29th Street and continuing up to 44th Street, the green space disappears and the pedestrian and bike paths turn into a more temporary looking passageway. This stretch also has a few other features. At 30th Street, there's a helicopter landing pad and just across from the Javits Convention Center is the large Pier 76, which we'll get back to in a moment. Moving further north, you'll find Pier 79, which serves as both the ventilation tower for the Lincoln Tunnel and a ferry terminal for commuters coming from New Jersey. If you take a ferry to Manhattan from New Jersey, this is likely where you'll dock. North of that, Piers 81 and 83 are currently leased out as docks for yachts and sightseeing boats. Then, at 44th Street, there's Pier 84, which has been transformed into a park. In the 20th century, Pier 84 was where many immigrants and returning soldiers from World War II first set foot in New York. The Pier's building used to host concerts and other events until it became too dilapidated and was eventually torn down. The pier itself was converted into a park in 2006. So these are the piers along the Hudson Yards waterfront, from 29th Street to 44th Street. With the development of the Hudson Yards neighborhood, it's clear that this stretch of waterfront space needs to be reimagined and better connected with the piers mentioned earlier. In mid-2023, the Hudson River Park Trust issued an RFP, Request for Proposals, to seek new design plans for this waterfront area. Let's talk about Pier 76 which is a significant part of the waterfront between 29th and 44th streets. This pier covers a large area and was built in 1964. Before that, several piers in this area were used by United States Lines, a transatlantic shipping company. One of the most famous ships owned by this company was the SS United States, built in 1952. It's the largest ship ever built in the US and still holds the record for the fastest transatlantic crossing by a passenger liner. However, even at its speed, it couldn't compete with modern passenger planes and so air travel gradually replaced ocean liners for transatlantic trips. By 1964, New York City had rebuilt Pier 76 as a cargo terminal, but it wasn't long before freight operations also moved out of Manhattan. Starting in 1977, Pier 76 was repurposed as New York City's tow pound, where vehicles towed for parking violations were stored. In 2021, Pier 76 was transformed into a temporary public space and incorporated into the Hudson River Park. The existing structures were mostly demolished, leaving only the steel framework. Since then, the space has hosted various outdoor events. However, this is only a short-term use. Pier 76 is still awaiting a long-term redevelopment plan because, according to the Hudson River Park Act passed in 1998, only a few piers within the park are allowed to have commercial facilities. The revenue from these facilities helps fund the park's operations. So far, piers 40 and 76 are the only ones yet to be redeveloped according to this plan. The rule is that at least half of the pier's space must be used as a public park, with the rest available for commercial development. Discussions and planning for Pier 76's future are still in the early stages. And in addition to the Hudson River Park Trust's involvement, private developers have also proposed ideas. One particularly interesting proposal was unveiled at the end of 2023. Remember the SS United States we mentioned earlier? The ship was retired in 1969 and has been docked in Philadelphia for years. It's currently owned by the SS United States Conservancy, an organization dedicated to preserving and finding a new use for the ship, similar to how Friends of the High Line championed the preservation of the High Line. In 2018, the Conservancy partnered with developer RxR to explore possibilities for the ship's future. RxR, which was also part of the team that developed Pier 57, originally considered docking the SS United States at Pier 57. By the end of 2023, they announced a new plan to repurpose the SS United States, with Pier 76 in Hudson River Park identified as the best location. The idea is to convert the ship into a hotel docked at Pier 76, with some rooms located where the lifeboats used to be. 
the ship's smokestack would be transformed into a museum, and the pier itself would be redeveloped into a park. Some of the plans even suggest extending the High Line to connect with the ship or adding commercial spaces alongside the park. Right now, this proposal is in the early stages of feasibility studies. The future of this project depends on how the team negotiates with New York State, New York City and the HRPT. But overall, it's a fascinating and unique idea. After passing the Hudson Yard section of the waterfront, the Hudson River Park continues from 44th Street up to 59th Street, which is the northernmost part of the park, located along the river in the Hell's Kitchen neighborhood. If you look at a map, you'll notice that this part of the shoreline seems to curve inward toward the land. This is because federal regulations had set a limit on the navigable width of the Hudson River. So when New York City wanted to build longer piers, they had to push the shoreline further inland. This happened in 1910, when they built Chelsea piers to accommodate the large transatlantic ships of the time. But as passenger ships grew even larger, New York needed bigger piers. So between 1920 and 1937, the city built piers 84, 86, 88, 90, 92, and 94 along the Hell's Kitchen waterfront to replace Chelsea piers as the main passenger ship terminals. In 1974, the buildings on piers 88, 90, and 92 were modernized to meet the needs of new cruise ships. Then in 2004, Piers 88 and 90 underwent further renovations as passenger terminals, while Pier 92 stopped being used as a passenger pier that same year. Pier 86 took on a new role in 1982 when it became the permanent home of the USS Intrepid, a World War II aircraft carrier. The entire pier was transformed into the Intrepid Sea Air and Space Museum. The USS Intrepid, which served from 1943 to 1974, saw action in World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. Today, it's a museum showcasing various aircraft, including the Space Shuttle Enterprise. The pier also features a Concorde plane and the diesel-powered submarine Growler, which was armed with nuclear warheads during the Cold War. As for piers 92 and 94, in 2009, the New York City government leased these piers to the developer Vornado for use as exhibition spaces. The Armory Show, an annual art fair, has been held there multiple times. However, during a routine inspection in 2019, structural issues were discovered at Pier 92, and it's currently not in use. In 2023, Vornado announced plans to convert the buildings on Pier 94 into a film and television studio, with completion expected in 2025. Just north of Pier 94 is Clinton Cove, a green space that connects to two smaller piers, Pier 95 and Pier 96. Moving further north, you'll find Pier 97, which is currently being transformed into a park, with completion expected by the end of 2023. Across the street from Pier 97 is Via 57, a residential building designed by Bjarke Ingels Group. Starting from this point, 12th Avenue becomes an elevated roadway as it continues north. North of Pier 97, Pier 98 is currently leased to Coned for their use, and Pier 99 is used by the New York City Department of Sanitation, so these piers haven't yet been incorporated into Hudson River Park. At this point, 59th Street marks the northernmost boundary of Hudson River Park. Beyond this point, the Hudson River waterfront is managed by other park authorities. Let's wrap things up by summarizing the different piers within Hudson River Park. The green-colored piers are those that have already been transformed into parks or open spaces. The orange-colored piers are those that generate revenue for the park. This includes piers leased to other entities like Chelsea Piers and Pier 57, as well as piers that will be redeveloped for both park and commercial use such as Pier 40 and Pier 76. The other piers, marked in grey, are currently not part of Hudson River Park. Most of these are managed by other New York City agencies. Now that we've covered the current state of Hudson River Park, let's talk about something crucial for its future development flood protection along the waterfront. This inevitably brings us back to Hurricane Sandy in October 2012, which caused significant damage to New York City. Within Hudson River Park, many piers and park areas were damaged, and the park's electrical system was so heavily impacted that it took nearly two years, 20 months to fully restore it. Hurricane Sandy also served as a wake-up call for New Yorkers, highlighting the real and immediate threats posed by climate change and rising sea levels. 
In response, the federal government under President Obama launched the Rebuild by Design competition in 2014 to gather ideas on how to tackle these challenges. One of the winning proposals was the Big U, which focused on flood protection strategies through urban space design in Midtown and Downtown Manhattan. Initially, this was just a broad concept, but it provided a framework that led to the development of more detailed plans. Each of these plans addresses a specific section of Manhattan's waterfront, involving spatial planning, design, public engagement, budget approvals, and eventually, construction. The ultimate goal is to create a continuous urban space along Manhattan's waterfront that not only provides flood protection, but also enhances the quality of the waterfront. However, none of these detailed plans currently include Hudson River Park because there isn't yet an overarching flood protection plan for this area. Without a master plan, there can't be any detailed proposals. The most relevant update related to Hudson River Park comes from a report released in September 2022 by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The 2022 report focuses on storm risk management for the New York and New Jersey Harbor areas and is still in its preliminary stages. In this report, the Army Corps proposed several options to address future coastal storm risks in this region. One of the comparison scenarios is doing nothing, which would leave coastal residents and properties highly vulnerable during future hurricanes. Among the proposed solutions, the Army Corps suggested building a series of flood walls in key waterfront areas, including a 12-foot high wall between the West Side Highway and the Hudson River in Hudson River Park. This would, however, undo decades of efforts to revitalize New York's waterfront. The Army Corps recommended this option primarily because it's the cheapest among their proposals, though it still costs $53 billion and would only protect about 60% of the at-risk areas. Fortunately, this isn't the only option they proposed. Other, more expensive options involve building large floodgates closer to the Atlantic Ocean at the harbor's entrance, which could be closed during storms to prevent storm surges from flooding inland areas. When the report was released in 2022, it sparked a lot of discussion. The latest update as of November 2023 is that in response to public and political pressure, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation rejected the Army Corps' recommended plan, essentially asking them to go back to the drawing board. So the future development of Hudson River Park remains full of challenges. From the evolution of Hudson River Park, we can see how urban waterfront spaces adapt to the changing needs of the city and now they also face the added challenge of climate change. Of course, these challenges can also be viewed as opportunities to further improve urban waterfront spaces. We'll explore these comparisons and challenges more when we discuss other waterfront areas in New York.